sol já eu se levantou amor vem ver o sol já se fez mais uma vez vem sentar ao meu lado é de manhã eu estou acordado vem a noite foi levou consigo meu desabrigo não me leve a mal a vida é é assim do ar Joe the Shirt is off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody. Ah, welcome back. Ah, it's good to be back again so quickly. Uh, my fifth show this month. I like, uh, I, like, I like doing more shows. I'm feeling much better. I was uh, uh, planning on doing a show yesterday, but uh, that did not work out the way I planned. I'll tell you all about that in a second. Uh, today's music is brought to you by uh, Andre Cortada. And his song, Carnaval, subtitled Flores Partidas. Mm, I'm sure it's really deep, meaningful shit to Andre. Anyway, um, <laughs> what happened to me yesterday? Uh, thank you for listening, by the way. I'm so glad you're here. Please continue to tell your friends and repost the show on your Facebook and your Twitters and your whatever it is you kids do these days. Uh <laughs> But uh, I, uh, I was planning on doing a show yesterday, but for the first time in uh, a long time, I put in a full day's work. Now, as you know, I, was, uh, I used to be a bartender. I used to be a stand-up comic. I used to be a lot of things. I used to work at a spa for seven and a half years. But uh, after losing my bartending gig... Uh, I didn't do jack or shit other than look for work and collect uh, unemployment, which was fun for a little while. Collecting unemployment's fun, okay? If you've never done it, definitely try it at least once. You will really enjoy it, but only for a little while. When it goes like two years, um, <laughs> it gets a little depressing. <laughs> but, but so... Uh, And so uh, when, I, when I got the gig I'm, I'm doing right now, I'm working at an animal rescue. And, uh, you know, I told them, look, uh, you know, it's part time. You know, I told them, look, it's, this is part time. So, uh, at, you know, I'm going to be looking for work, other work as I go along, you know, which I have been, you know. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll apply online. I'll go and I'll apply in person to places. You know, I almost had a job a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what happened there. But, you know. Apparently, my bosses forgot that I told them this, and then uh, one of my coworkers apparently mentioned to my bosses that I was looking for to get another job, uh, which they took to say that I meant to leave them, which was which was possible if I got a job that you know offered me enough hours, enough money, and and the, and, and the right situation. Um, they decided that they wanted to keep me, so they so now I am full time. Okay, I'm putting in uh, the, the full-time, 40 hours a week kind of deal thing now. Uh, I'm also uh, got a little bit of promotion, a little bit, where I'm in charge of the mornings, you know, and uh, how, how stuff, how shit gets done is up to me now. And, uh, you know, it's my job to make sure it gets done. But it's eight hours a day, which I have not done in like almost uh, over two and a half years. So yesterday was my first day of doing this full-time day of work. And my day starts at five in the morning when I get up. So that way I have time to, you know, wake up, shower, make myself something to eat, eat it, feed the dog, walk the dog, uh, spend a little quality time with my girlfriend, which is basically, you know, her and I, you know, fucking around on Facebook and ignoring each other. That's fine. That's what mornings are for. And then, <laughs> and then I start work at 7 in the morning every day, okay? And uh, I had to work from 7 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, full 8-hour day. I came home. I was absolutely fucking exhausted. I, it, it just the whole idea of having to be responsible and awake and aware 
and uh, beholden to, some, to anything for that long it had become such a foreign thing to me that when I went to bed last night, it was still daylight outside. <laughs> Okay? And that's not because I was drunk. That's not because I was high. That's not because of any of that bullshit. I was tired. Okay? I went to bed. I don't even think it was 8 o'clock. It was still daylight. I felt so incredibly fucking old. I was like, oh my God. I can't believe I'm even considering this, but I'm going to do it. And I went to bed before 8 o'clock last night. So, uh, uh, my girlfriend assures me that within a week, my body clock will adjust to the schedule. And I'm, I know she's right, but uh, yesterday, it was absolutely everything I could do to not go to sleep at 7. All right? So, you know, give me a break there. But, you know, uh, I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good these days, you know, because, you know, my, my job uh, recognized my value to them. And uh, they made it an effort to, you know, want to keep me. And I really appreciate that, you know. And, uh, and it, it moves me and my life in, in a better direction, you know, uh, more responsibility, some more money, more that I can contribute finally, you know. Because uh, despite all the jokes I make, I don't like being a sponge on my poor girlfriend, the Russian, who has put up with my bullshit for a long time and will continue to put up with my bullshit for a much longer time but there's some bullshit I shouldn't have to give her quite as much of and so you know congratulations to me and uh, with that in mind I'll probably be getting a lot more pussy so you know that's uh, that's the hope you know because because you know a happy woman gives her man pussy mm. ah I'm also very happy because uh, I finally found another website that offers celebrity birthdays. And in, in, a, in a clear, concise, easy to understand fashion, again. Because I miss doing celebrity birthdays. I really do. Because I, 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 I can't sleep at night without knowing who, what famous person's birthday it is today. You know, I, it, it bothers me when I don't know. So I'm going to go through today's celebrity birthdays. And if your birthday happens to be today, June 17th, you share a birthday with Venus Williams, who is 34 years old. God, what a fucking body on that bitch. Oh, my God. That professional tennis player? Oh, my God. Oh. Mm. Uh, Barry Manilow is 71 years old. Greg Kinnear, actor, funny, funny guy, is 51 years old. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church is 54. You would probably remember Thomas Hayden Church most if you if uh you ever watch the tv series uh, sitcom uh, wings all right he was also in tombstone uh newt gingrich is 71 still not dead unfortunately uh actor jason patrick is 48 years old he he's had an interesting career jason patrick he's he's the guy that was fortunate enough to star in uh the lost boys you know then there, and then, unfortunate enough to star in Speed Two, you know where they're on a boat. <laughs> really not speedy. Just letting you know. And uh, actor comedian Joe Piscopo, mostly of SNL fame, is sixty three years old. My God. So that's what's going on these days. Uh, I've been having a really good time. I've been reconnecting with a lot of my uh, old uh, stand-up comedy pals. Like I mentioned, uh, Marie Valeriano, Sam Tripoli, uh, Matt Fulcheron. You know, and just uh, Marie's got a podcast called Road Stories, and I and I and I posted that on my on my uh, Facebook uh, page today. Uh, check it out. I mean, if if uh, this, this is how I really put it, it's like it's like if you ever really wanted to find out what being a stand-up comedian is like, listen listen to these podcasts, uh, Road Stories with Murray Valeriano, because I gotta tell you, it, it, it's not all booze, bitches, and blow. Okay, it's so much of being a stand-up comic is just you know being miserable enough to be funny. I know that's a weird way of putting it, but that's really in a lot of ways what it is. Uh, when you mean when you when you're on the road, you know uh, the idea is that you hope to get paid doesn't always happen. You hope there'll be an audience there doesn't always happen. You hope 
that you'll have some place to sleep doesn't always happen. And you hope that some drunk doesn't try to kill you at the end of your set or even better during your set. Which, by the way, that doesn't always happen either. So, yeah, uh, check out Road Stories. It's just... <laughs> Uh, Murr is uh, one of those guys that he just, he's just he's just easy to listen to, and the son of a preacher man. So there you go. Oh, uh, what is going on in the news? I've I have one of the things that uh, caught my attention is uh, once again basketball, which is my favorite sport of all time, and it is the greatest sport of all time. Fuck you, soccer. Okay, I don't like soccer. I'm not good at soccer. Uh, and I don't give a fuck that we call it that everybody else calls it football and we call it soccer here. Did you know that soccer is actually the number one children's sport in the United States and yet nobody beyond the age of 12 wants to play soccer? <laughs> but do you know why it's called soccer? You think it's because of us, right? You think it's because of Americans, right? Uh-uh. We did not come up with the term soccer. The British did. Those cocksuckers, they came up with soccer. What happened was uh, they were putting together these games and they needed stuff to call it. And they came up with associations and they came up with the, the, something, uh, the football league and they came up with the rugby football league. And then they came up with something else, but it was part of a different league. So they came up with the word soccer, which, by the way, was used in England until the 1980s. Okay, so... When, when they're always giving that bullshit, it's like, oh, you Americans, you call it soccer. Like, no, no, no. You called it soccer, you British fuck. You did. Now you blame us for it. Well, fuck it. It's called soccer. Mind you, I, I will admit, though, that, you know, our American football, how often does a foot actually touch the ball? What, like once or twice an entire quarter? I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not really football. It's really more like rugby. Anyway, I'm off topic yet again. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking about uh, the NCAA. I'm talking about... Actually, I think I did cover this, but I wanted to cover it a little bit more. Uh, we're talking about uh, Ed O'Bannon, who is a former UCLA basketball player, a uh, big phenom back in the 90s. Uh, I think uh, took uh, UCLA to, to, the, to, to the championship and uh, the promised land and all that good shit. But, you know, he and others are suing the NCAA and some video game companies because uh, they're using the likeness of Ed O'Bannon and other players to market their games and sell their games and, uh, and other products. And uh, he thinks it's ridiculous that somebody should, you know, be allowed to use their image and they not get paid for it. What a shock! Well, of course that's ridiculous. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, taking the whole amateur status bullshit out of college sports. I really am. I think it's bullshit. I think that it's ridiculous that these uh, big ass universities make millions upon billions of dollars a year off of uh, shoe contracts, uh, athletic equipment contracts. Uh, let's see, a clo- apparel contracts and uh, video game contracts and uh, cable contracts, TV contracts, and the players get nothing, okay? I mean, okay, okay, they'll, they'll tell you, well, they get an education, you know, they, they get this for free, they get to go to a, they get a first-rate education and they get, a, they get their meals paid for and they have access to the buffet, I'm like, ooh, you know, but... <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that is that the university makes millions of dollars off of these guys and uh coaches for uh you know major universities can make 500,000 to million dollars a year if not more. There's some some college coaches make more money than some NBA coaches, all right? So I think it's absolutely ridiculous that these guys, you know, are not allowed to participate in the money. Um, they tell you, one of the reasons they tell you that they don't want to uh, expand this is because then uh, if you take away the amateur status of the players, then uh, the the schools with more money are going to be able to buy, basically, the better players. I'm like, they do it anyway. 
They really do. So uh, I, I, I said, I'm calling bullshit on the NCAA. I'm calling uh, bullshit on these colleges and these coaches and the, it, it's, it's bullshit. You know, I, I, you know I, I'm just putting it right there. So uh, much luck to Ed O'Bannon there. Uh, uh, and, you know, and, uh, you know, I hope uh, that he wins. Uh, he's actually dropping uh, a lot of the suit provisos. You know, he's not looking, he's not really looking for money more. He just wants recognition. So for future athletes who, you know, happen to, you know, be in a video game that where a player wears their number and looks just like them and dunks with the left hand, uh, you know, maybe he should get something for that. I don't know. And it's time for a break. Uh, let's see. We're, use, we're listening to Andre Cortada today. Uh, we, his first song was Carnival, subtitled Flores Partidas. And this is the second song. It's called Se. Yeah, that's it. It's just called Se. <laughs> I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff. I'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Ah, oh, well, I'm having a good time. I always have such a good time when I do the show. I really do. Uh, introducing a new segment to the show today. I've uh, brought back the birthday segment, celebrity birthday segment, which I've always enjoyed. And I know you all secretly do as well. All right? Don't act like you don't. But uh, we've got a new segment coming up. Uh, tell you about that in a little bit. I want to tell you more about what's been going on here in my hometown, uh, Los Angeles. I know not originally my hometown. I'm a New Yorker. But uh, you may have heard that the LA Kings, that's a hockey team now, have won the Stanley Cup. And uh, they beat my other home team, the New York Rangers. (laughs) See, that was the best part of how... (laughs) The LA Kings playing the New York Rangers because I'm from New York, but I now live in LA because no matter what the fuck happens, my home team wins. So, you know, <laughs> it takes four games, takes seven, doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> I, I win anyway, and I really don't really care. I really don't care about hockey all that much, but, you know, congratulations to the Kings. Though I'm a little disappointed with Kings fans. Um,. Apparently, there were thousands of people gathered all over Staples Center on Friday. Uh, police were there to try to, you know, control the the crowd and prevent any mischief. But um, police did, in fact, make three arrests. Two for battery and one for public intoxication. Um, another man was arrested on suspicion of drunken behavior near Chick Hearn Court on Figueroa Street. Three arrests? How fucking disappointing is that? Jesus fucking Christ. God damn it. What, what happened to the good old days when your team won? You, you know, flipped car, police cars over and set them on fire and, you know, beat the living shit out of everybody around you. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Only three arrests? 
and two for battery, which means there was two guys hitting each other and one for being drunk and public, into- Ooh, public intoxication. Really? I mean, that would they, they, they should have been in arrest for like, you know, you know, two-thirds of the crowd for that one. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm very disappointed with the Kings fans. I thought, you know, see, that's why I say, you know, L.A. is not a good sports town. It really isn't. Nobody, nobody really gets into it, you know. Not like uh, soccer fans. Soccer fans, which is a sport, like I said, soccer is a sport I like even less than hockey. Uh, actually, I think I can pretty much say I kind of hate soccer, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but uh, I, it's very popular. It's very good for you. It's like one, I think it's like the number one sport in the world. It's very healthy. You know, I, I don't knock it for its, uh, its qualities. I, I knock it for its lack of qualities. For instance, scoring. You, ever, you watch a soccer game, it's, it's a long fucking game. And you can go an entire game without anybody scoring. <laughs> and I, that's, that's dull. <laughs> I don't care who the fuck you are. <laughs> I'm sitting in my seat for three and a half fucking hours. Nobody scored? I want a refund. <laughs> and I've played soccer. All right, and look, playing soccer is always more fun than watching soccer. Playing baseball is always more fun than playing baseball. You know what? I don't sit at home and watch fishing shows. Now, I know a lot of you rednecks do. (laughs) You know who you are. (laughs) But you like to watch the fishing shows. You like to watch them, you know. You know, do using, the, using their bait casters and their spinners and their fly rods and whatever the fuck bait they're using. You, yeah, you know you watch. But, but it's way more fun to do it than it actually is to watch it, you know? I mean, I, I think the, there's only two things that I do that I watch that I consider almost as fun as actually doing it. One being sex, because I love porn, and the other being poker. Which sounds a lot like you know porn. No, but <laughs> watching, I like, I, lo- I love watching porn, and uh, which is really weird because I don't watch videos of guys driving cars. I wish I could drive, but I will watch videos of men banging chicks that I want to bang. You know, I'd, <laughs> for all the sense that that makes. <laughs> uh, now, uh, everybody, is, everybody uh, around this neighborhood is uh, wetting their pants because uh, apparently the United States in the uh, World Cup uh, beat Ghana, some African country. And uh, it's, it's a big deal because apparently in the last, well, I think like in two of the last uh, few World Cups, Ghana was the team that eliminated the United States. So, you know, we beat Ghana. Yay. <laughs> Ah, uh, and now while we're having this much fun, let's talk a little bit about child abuse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you wonder about how many American children are are abused, do you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do. I'm sure a lot of you have been uh, victims of child abuse. I'm sure quite a few of you know people or are people that have abused children in some way, fashion, or another. Uh I consider myself a victim of child abuse. Uh, my stepfather was a mean, nasty, angry, drunk of a human being uh, that treated me like a paddle ball. So, yes, I am angry and resentful. But uh, you, 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 did you ever wonder just how much of it actually happens in the United States? Well, apparently, they came out with some numbers. <clears throat> According to this, About one in eight American children will experience some form of maltreatment serious enough to be confirmed by government authorities considered child abuse. One in eight. You know, that's that's roughly mm, 12.5% of the population. So uh, you go out there, you see eight kids, there's a really good chance that one of them is either getting molested or getting his ass kicked on a regular basis. Um... But there are other stats that come into play when you're talking about uh, socioeconomic and racial divides. Uh, Apparently, according to this, uh, and also by age, which is pretty wild to me. Which it's not really all that wild, but it's 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 something. Uh, Slightly more than two percent of children are victimized during their first year of life. That is a disgusting number. I don't care what the number is. 
I don't know who the fuck it is you think you are that you need to abuse a baby under a year old. Okay, not even a full year old. It's first year of life. Something sick and twisted in you decided I'm going to physically and or sexually take advantage of a child. You're a sick fuck. And if there's a hell, you're most likely going. I, I, don't, I don't hold any... Uh, I, I, I don't hold any patience for anybody that does anything like that. I just do not. Continuing. Um, let's see. 5.8% uh, of children are mistreated before their fifth birthday. So that's a big jump in number. That's almost three times as many kids as before. And a little bit, a little here, I can I can start to understand because if you've ever had a child, you've been around children. You know, around, around the time they get five, they're kind of really fucking annoying. Um, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love kids. I love my sister's kids, my nieces, my nephews. I love my friends' kids. I really do. But uh, the, if 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 there's a mother on the planet that hasn't gotten sick of the words mom 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 you know what you're a liar you've gotten sick of that fucking word not i'm not saying that that's it makes it right to physically or sexually abuse your children but i but i i i understand where the impetus might come from doesn't make it right i'm just saying and according to this, and about 12.5% of children experience some form of abuse or neglect before they turn 18. So 12.5%, better than 10%, better than 1 in 10. When we're talking about 1 in 8 American children experience some form of physical or sexual abuse before the age of 18. That is a disgusting number. Uh, it should be zero. But uh, those are the facts. Now, like I said, it does get a little more in-depth here when it, when it comes to socioeconomic and racial divides. Uh, for instance, uh, let's see. Let's see. They, now, they do identify that roughly 5.7 million children have suffered documented cases of neglect or physical, sexual, or emotional abuse between the years of 2004 and 2011. Uh, they believe that the true count is actually much higher because it goes unreported. Now, of all children, African-American children were found to be the most at risk for physical or sexual or emotional abuse, with a whopping 20.9% of them projected to suffer abuse or neglect by the time they turn 18. That's almost 21% of every black child out there. So we're talking more than 2 out of 10 black children are most likely uh, going to get the shit kicked out of them in one way or another. Uh, let's see, the study also uh, points to... Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Native American children, uh, you know, we might call them Indians, uh, have almost as high, with a, with a recorded 14.5 percent of uh, the population, followed by Latinos with 13 percent, and an estimated 10.7 percent of white children will suffer maltreatment before reaching adulthood. Uh, the absolute lowest at risk. Uh, in, these, in this particular study, uh, children of Asian or Pacific Islanders. So uh, Chinese, Japanese, Hawaiian, uh, only 3.8%. Which is pretty good, you know, comparatively speaking, I suppose. But uh, still not good enough. Uh, apparently gender also plays a role, but only by a very small margin. Uh, the com comparison of 13% to 12.1% girls are more likely than boys to suffer abuse, abuse or neglect during childhood. Uh, that, that's okay. Yes, it's a significant number when you when you're considering that there are roughly 350 million people living in this country, and 13% of boys and you know 12 and a half. I mean, 13% of girls and like 12.1% of boys are being abused in some way or another. Those are that's a lot of fucking kids. All right. Uh, but uh, still, girls get it worse because uh, despite, you know, despite everything, there's still some really nasty, fucked up individuals out there that are more likely because they are, in fact, heterosexual, twisted fucks, but heterosexual and are more likely to physically abuse, molest, 
girls than they are boys. Mind you, they're both sick. They're both wrong. But, uh, you know, it gets done. It gets done anyway, but in different percentages. Yeah, that was a downer, wasn't it? You know what? When I come back, I'm going to just start with the, my new segment because that, that just brought me down, man. Uh, our next song by Andre Cortada from, for our next break is called Silencio. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. That's enough, Silencio, because this is Joe the Shirt, and I'm off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody. I decided to make that a short break because uh, the previous one was a bit on the long side. Uh, welcome to the new segment today, um, which, I, which I am, uh, so far it's a working title, but you know, you let me know what you think of it. I call it The Wisdom of Rappers, where I bring to you, every time I do a show from now on, I'm going to bring to you the lyrics of a song of a rapper who has touched my heart, you know, really shared something deep and meaningful about their worldview that really relates to me and my worldview. Today's, um, today's wisdom from a rapper comes from Sir Mix-a-Lot and his uh, very famous song, Baby Got Back. <clears throat> so make sure you really take the time to listen to the words and really take in how important this is. <clears throat> so it makes a lot. Baby got back. Okay. So your girlfriend rolls a Honda playing workout tapes by Fonda. But Fonda ain't got a motor in the back of her Honda. My Anaconda don't want none unless you've got buns, hon. Some brothers want to play that hard roll and tell you that the butt ain't gold. So they toss it and leave it, and I pull up quick to retrieve it. So Cosmo says you're fat. Well, I ain't down with that. Oh, yeah, just beautiful. I mean, seriously, I mean, the, the poetry, the, 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 the message that we're given. We're, we're talking about a song that celebrates the female form. We're talking about a song that celebrates that, you know what? Having a nice, big, round ass, you know, some nice, thick-ass thighs, having a bubble, you know? having Looking like a woman is a beautiful thing, and that's what I want a piece of, okay? So I'm in trouble. I want to get a piece of that bubble, okay? That's what we're saying here. Look at it, the wisdom of rappers. How, how, do, how do you not, like, go with that? I mean, that's just incredible to me. I mean, seriously, my, my anaconda don't want none unless you got puns, hon. I mean, you know what? If, if, you, if you don't agree with that as a man, seriously, just give me your girl's phone number, all right? Just, just that's what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> that's the wisdom of rappers. <laughs> Very first one here on Joe the Shirts Off the Cuff. Ah, now, um, poetic justice is a concept that a lot of people like to come up with. Uh, a lot of people like to call it karma. Uh, but it's when basically, you know, it's when something, somebody is a bad person and then something bad happens to them or whatever, whatever. Okay, here's a story for you. This is the story of Bobby Lee Pearson, who's a 37-year-old career criminal who had 11 prior convictions. Okay? He did these things. He, he's, he's, he's a criminal, all right? Uh, apparently he got the break of his life. Uh, apparently the, uh, the jury in a particular case in Fresno was a little confused as to how to indicate to the judge that they were a hung jury. So rather than let him know that they, 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 they couldn't make a decision, they just, they, 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 they divided eight to four in favor of guilt 
Uh, but they mistakenly checked the not guilty box. And so they read the verdict and they had to let him go. <laughs> you're, you're not going to get a break like that too often in life, okay? <laughs> they had him dead to rights. <laughs> he had priors. He was probably going to be, he was probably at the very least a three strike or probably going to go to prison for the rest of his fucking life. But in a bizarre twist of fate, uh, less than an hour after being released, he was dead. <laughs> According to police, he was stabbed to death by his by his sister's boyfriend at her house when he when he arrived to get his stuff. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just dumb. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you believe in heaven, you believe in God, this guy gets killed, he goes to heaven, people are going to be asking him, so, uh, how did you die? <laughs> it's like, fool, you won't even believe me. <laughs> oh, my God. My sympathies to his family. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we please, please stop smuggling ivory out of Africa? You know why? Because to get ivory, you have to kill elephants. I like elephants. Everybody likes elephants. I mean, and uh, let's not act as if if all the elephants in the world disappeared, we wouldn't notice. There's a reason there's a saying called, you know, the elephant in the room. Because they're a really big fucking animal. Okay? According to uh, this particular uh, article here, uh, more than 20,000 elephants were poached last year in Africa. Uh, now, when, if you, in case you don't know what the word poached means, and I'm not talking that they boiled them in water and vinegar, okay? No, I'm talking that they were killed and their uh, heads essentially chopped and hacked away at with either axes or saws and had their, and had their tusk removed. Uh, apparently, 80% of the uh, African seizures were in Kenya... Tanzania and Uganda, three of the eight nations required to draw up plans to curb ivory smuggling. Uh, the report said poaching was increasing in Central African Republic, but uh, declining in Chad. About 28% of Africa's elephants are in the east, but most of them, close to 55%, are in the south. Uh, some populations of elephants continue to face immediate threat of local extinction. Okay. Stop killing the fucking elephants. You know what? I've seen video of pygmies in Africa hunting elephants, killing them. But you know what? You know what they did after they killed them? They ate them. Okay? They, they, they ate them. You know, they chopped them up and they ate them. They didn't just take the tusk and leave two tons of elephant to rot in the fucking jungle. That's bullshit. Uh... You're going to notice when the elephants are gone, people. Trust me on that. You you will notice. And, and, and it makes me sick that the people do this still because, uh, you know, they, they, why do you want ivory? For decorative purposes. You know what? You can decorate your house or your car or your boat or anything with anything artificial that looks like ivory. You don't need to kill fucking elephants. Uh, I, I feel the same way when it comes to other uh, killings. Uh, uh, when you're killing uh, rhinos, because you want to, you want their horn. And do you know why people want rhino horn? Uh, for, in some parts of the world, it's still considered a uh, a, a, a med of medicinal value, where you know it helps to improve your health, uh, it helps to make you stronger. But for most people, it's actually used as an aphrodisiac. Because your horn doesn't work, you want the rhino's horn. Okay? And they take it, they, they grind it up, and they sell it to you, this dust. By the way, they could sell you anything. You're, are, do you have a rhino horn testing kit in your house? They could be selling you anything. But people actually do all go off and kill rhinos to get their horn. And by the way, do you know what rhino horn is made out of? Hair. That's it. A rhino's horn is hair. That's it. It's just hair that's developed in a very particular shape. There is nothing in rhino horn that will do anything for you, your overall health, and especially not your dick. Stop killing the rhinos. Um, 
it, 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 it's 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 just it you know it, it's stupid that's what it is it's stupid you know i understand when people kill animals for food i understand when people kill animals in self-defense but when you're killing animals because you want to decorate your house or your dick's not getting hard you're a fucking moron okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, now this is a, a topic uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, you may have heard that a lot of times, uh, well, women in college accuse some guy of raping them. Uh, in most of these cases, what's happening is the guy goes out with his buddies, going to a kegger, chick goes out with her friends, and they promise that they're going to stick together. And uh, they're going to go to the kegger and everybody gets drunk and everybody a lot of times will end up uh, hooking up with somebody that, you know, he's like really cute. He's like really nice. And he has like this incredible opening line. It's called, hey, what's your major? And then um, <laughs> or, or or your friends let your beer goggle. You're just like, hey, I'm going to talk to that hot chick over there. And, you're, and they're like, you mean the buck tooth one or the one with the ass bigger than the sofa? No, man, the hot one right there. And they know exactly your beer goggling. That's, you know. But, and then, you know, people hook up, which is, happens a lot in college. Believe me, I hooked up plenty in college. I, I had sex with people that I never, ever, ever saw again. <laughs> Not to worry you, me. And yes, there was a lot of booze involved on both sides. And then what happens is these women then accuse uh, these men of taking advantage of them. Now, now let's remember what I just said. She was drunk. He was drunk. Somehow, she's not responsible for his for her behavior. But he's responsible for his behavior. And so he gets to go to jail. He gets to be kicked out of college. He gets to be uh, labeled for the rest of his life as a sexual predator. Okay. What's happening now is men are fighting back. Men are suing college campuses. They're suing their accusers. Uh, and, and they're suing for the right to face their accusers. Because a lot of times what happens in these cases is even if there isn't any sort of a criminal action against these guys, these guys are getting kicked out of college. They're losing their scholarships. They're losing their reputations. You know, uh, all of a sudden, and then, uh, be, and then that reputation, the reputation, the new reputation, follows them wherever they go. So a lot of times, when they get kicked out of out of one school and they apply to another, it's like, oh yeah, sure, absolutely, we'll take you. You got great grades. You have great attitude. You're exactly what we're looking for. But whoa, ho, ho. This drunk girl said that you fucked her against her will. I mean, nobody proved anything. There was no trial. Nobody was arrested. But just because she said so, mm, no, you can't. You can't join our college. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for this. I think that. Uh, look, I understand. Yes, th that in truth, there are some assholes out there that do, in fact, get women really, really drunk. Maybe even roofie them, drug them in some way, and then take advantage of them physically. But. I, I, I refuse to keep excusing women because they were drunk and had sex. That's what people do. You know, they go to college, they go to frat parties, they go to bars, they get really loaded, and then they have sex, and then they go, and then th this woman wakes up the next day and goes, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. Is that me on YouTube? Is that me? <laughs> And, and and then they sue these guys or they or they have these guys arrested and they ruin these guys' lives when all that those guys did was did exactly what the women did. They got drunk with somebody and had sex with them. And that's it for me for today. I'm going to come back to this story the next time we talk. Uh, this is more Andre Cortada. You know, finishing up uh, Joe the Shirt's Off the Cuff today with his song, A Dream Within a Dream. I'm Joe the Shirt. Um, I've been off the cuff. Maybe it's not Andre Cortada and he's ripping somebody off. I don't know. That's what he said.
Let's get some fun.